took the valve out wash it up and uh, I'm gonna take it apart and see what's going on inside it this is the return line I marked everything even the bolts even though some of them it doesn't matter but this will eliminate the guessing game when I try to assemble it I never done one of these before and I don't have manual for it so put everything back the way it came out and replace the o-rings I should fix it I took this part over here and it's the relief valve it had a 21 and a half turns I marked the bolts and the body over here and that's how it came out however it felt weak when I loosed it with the screwdriver it felt like there was just little bit tension from that spring when I assemble it I'll put it back to 21 and a half turn replace all the o-rings and uh, I may take it to hydraulic shop to put uh, to put it on gauge and adjust the screw or I may do it myself I may buy a gauge and figure out a way to set it up I believe uh, should be set to about 2500 pound but we'll see the valve now in pieces and I found out several problems however they very easy fix one of which I believe this valve was uh, rebuilt before or when they put it together originally they did a very bad job this thread over here was damaged and uh, I have to use this hacksaw blade and uh, cut a groove so I could use the screwdriver to hold it to take it apart I'm gonna have to replace this and this over here what caused the free float I believe I have to remove this lock ring of course I have to compress and hold the spring remove this lock ring there are some pullers over here uh, ball bearings they hold this in place so once I remove this part the ball bearing will become free and uh, I could pull this out I'm gonna machine a new one Uh, the o-ring between the valves they're in good shape I'm gonna replace all the o-rings by the way and uh, I'm gonna need to buy covers for these it's rubber covers and uh, this is the old part there's supposed to be some rubber here it's gone and all the o-rings for the ports they're in bad shape and that's what caused the major leak the outside leak uh, there was another problem that two other problems that caused the down leak and uh, they all associate with the up and down valve one of which one of the the back side of the valve the squid o-ring there was some compound it looked like an old silicone it's it's it was harder than silicone but it's 40 years old so I don't know all the other one they in good shape nothing wrong with them however I gotta replace all of them but I cleaned it with this over here I shaved that part off it felt like uh, epoxy or maybe dried silicone I don't know so that caused some leak another thing that I believe it caused some of the leak is uh, uh, internal leak it's this o-ring over here it's in real bad shape it was uh, in this part over here uh, this bullet go inside and the o-ring go here and then this part go on top the relief valve o-rings and 
uh, plastic washers they're in good shape however the if I could find them I'll replace them I'm gonna go tomorrow to uh, o-ring place locally and hopefully they have all this o-rings uh, it was easy nothing to it the design of the valve is very simple so uh, I did measure this over here and uh, measure the valve internally it's very tight tolerance I don't think there was any issue there is any issue here I had to machine a new shaft over here because these they wore out and there's a lot of play in them so I made one it's the whole length I'll take it apart and show you guys I made it one piece to minimize the play and uh, I put hole right here for this area and uh, the pin for this actuator over here gonna act as uh, a pin for this shaft too in this area in the middle so that removed the play completely I got all the new o-rings everything ready to go back in you need inch and a half inch and a quarter three quarter and flat head screwdriver and ring plier to work on this valve uh, I did have to lab the relief valve what I did I clean it real good and then I put some lapping compound and uh, actually like this and then I got me a, a, a hose put it here hook it to the drill use the lap compound and lab it where it's belong so it's it's good mating service it's not gonna leak and luckily I found all the rings uh, this one here I didn't have to machine this uh, bolt this special bolt uh, they use a lock washer it's a very thick lock washer and what I did, I replaced the lock nut with the full or heavy nut, and it's engaged by about three and a half, four threads. And I use Loctite; it's in. It's not gonna be. And I think there is the attention for this. Uh, if they're gonna service the valve, they're supposed to uh, put it on free float before they take it apart. This way it release all the pressure and uh, it be disengaged from here. So this spool will come out easy. Uh, when I took it apart there was a ball bearing missing. So I went to buy a ball bearing but the guy was nice and he gave them to me. You see they super cheap. And that's the strongest they have. Tungsten carbide. I also bought this bolt from O'Reilly half inch by 20 and I cut it down and it's gonna be an uh, in cap for the relief valve I guess I don't know if it has one or it's, it had one or it, it was missing or something but I made a new one so it will protect this part over here I also cut uh, the tip of a silicone uh, tube uh, and I insert it over here there's a hole underneath it and make it like uh, uh, it will it will make this heavy to tie it in so it won't become loose by itself and I also ready to assemble this back together I'm gonna what I did I compressed this spring with this bolt and I put some uh, tie wire on it this over here new and it's ready to go I will put the o-rings on all parts and I will show you how to assemble it okay I put all the new o-rings in 
However, I have a thought. If I install the new quad O-rings, the spool had a very sharp edges where it travel in and out, and this will damage the new rings. So I gave it a thought, and I think the only possible way to insert the spool through the O-rings without damaging is to in, uh, install the a new one in the front where the lever gonna be, and then leave this one here out. Insert the spool through this side where there is no o-ring until we get to this area over here. This area over here, the only part that they left round end on it, so it's not sharp. So I leave this one like this to clear the groove for the new o-rings and then I'm gonna put it in and try to install it. Uh, let us give it a shot. This is just hydraulic fluid. It's high tran. Okay, we take the new o-ring, dip it in oil, Uh, I was able to use uh, a small allen wrench. I did run the end of it so it won't damage the o-ring and I work it in. It was kind of hard and several trials and error but it's in. I did check it out with my flashlight. It's good all the way around so I'm ready to put it in. In. Now I'm gonna insert the spring and the ball bearings. I compress the spring. Now be careful, this is very dangerous. So this piece go first. like so and then this part let me grease it This part right here. And then the ball bearing.
within this part. I mean the snap ring. Just put enough tension just to insert it in. Don't put too much so it will lose its strength. with screwdriver one piece out in now we want to make sure that's the ball bearing still in place put a little bit more grease there area and now this part over here once again this is what does the free float can't get nothing done without the hammer so and it's in a place and this part done 
So I'm just gonna tie this up and then do the same thing with the other spools. Okay, I'm ready to insert the second spool. The o-ring is on this side. I'm gonna push it in just enough to clear the groove. Help it out a little bit with the hammer. Okay, it's in, just to clear it over here. I don't want to push it too much. So if I pull this ball back, it will damage the other O-ring. Keep work it out until it's in place. May have to push it a little bit in. And it's in a place. Same thing. Apply a little bit of grease over here. Same thing here.
me grab the allen wrench Just use a screwdriver over here to back it up. All the spools being installed, these o-rings on, I'm ready to assemble the whole thing back together. Just gonna put a little bit of uh, high drain fluid on the o-rings.
Now this great five bolts, the three eight, coarse thread. So I'm going to torque them to about thirty pound. The valve being assembled. Now I'm ready to put the relief valve in, and uh, the way it goes, this part go like this, and this part inside. I did have to uh, lab this one inside, but I did. I put it in, and then I use a, a hose to hold this part in. And then I put some uh, lapping compound around the ring where they mate. And uh, with a drill, I lap it in. So now I have very smooth surface and good mating surface. It's not supposed to leak. And this will go in. I will put some oil. This will go in. very free and then this spring will go inside like so and it will be exposed over here This will go like this, and this part over here, this little needle should go inside the spring. This spring it has two ends. One of them is tied; it won't fit, and the other one should fit right there. So, this part should go inside this bolt which once again I made this piece of plastic out of the end of silicone tube to uh, act as a wedge and I'll put it like this actually on this side I'm gonna tie it to 21 tight, uh, 21 turn, 21 and a half turn, and then I will uh, check it with the gauge later when I, once I receive the gauge and this thing installed on the dozer. It's completely assembled. I have a 21 and a half turn as it was before, and uh, it's ready to be put in. Little bit of oil on the O rings. And it's good right here on this port. And this is my homemade cover. I'm not going to tie this until I check the adjustment of this valve. And it's getting heavy. Uh, the way it go, this guard will go in first to keep the ball bearing, this uh, plastic ball bearing from 
going down in the valve. And then the O-ring. And the ball bearing. And then the body. Right now this part will go next, it's going to be here and then I'll install the ports. This here I polish them too. It's fairly easy, There's, there was nothing to it. God knows how much would they charge if I took it to hydraulic shop. And this over here, the last piece is the return line. Uh, the fluid will enter here from the pump. And 
and uh, it's controlled by the relief valve and then through the body it will uh, adjust which port should be sending the oil to and uh, which one the oil will return back to the reservoir so it's very easy and simple design and uh, actually rebuilding this valve it wasn't a challenge it, it was easy piece of cake nothing to it I'm gonna tie everything up clean it to dry it uh, dry the outside out of it uh, plug these ports I'm not gonna completely tie this until I put it in the dozer just in case I have to remove this again so I don't want to apply unnecessary pressure on the o-rings Well, last thing I built is this covers and I made them out of uh, inch and a quarter BBC uh, ink caps I had to cut about half inch out of them and I glue them with this silicone I drill a small hole on the bottom side so uh, if there is a leak or moisture or something it will come down but it will prevent uh, dust and debris from get inside the spring. It really look nice with this red paint. I also bought a new hose, one inch hose for the return line. And I brought this to clean the uh, pipes that go from the valve to the cylinders so let you go back in I'm gonna leave all the ports covered until I install it and ready to connect all the uh, pipes to it this way it will protect it from dust and debris and everything else this one over here is real good it's a free very minimum play I flushed the hydraulic tank and I changed the filter for it by removing it from the top and clean everything inside and as you see it's very clean I even took the glass and I cleaned it to show the level of the hydraulic fluid I installed the valve and I made new linkages, the one painted gray in this video. I ran the bulldozer until it warmed up, of course after I added hydraulic fluid and I have no leak, everything good. I made this uh, hydraulic high pressure gauge and I even made this fitting to fit right there in the high pressure port. Uh, after the bulldozer warmed up and I know the hydraulic fluid was warm I uh, set the RPM to high and I made sure one of the piston bottomed out and the pressure rise to 2100 so I know the relief valve was set to 2100 so I didn't have to do any adjustment to it I just put the ink cap on it and I call it job done there is no leak there is no play in the handles and everything good the only thing left is to put the covers on. Thank you for watching.